It takes four years to go through college. It takes an additional four years to go through medical school. Now, after you graduate from medical school, apply for residency. And uh, for us, we applied for internal medicine residency spot and we match. Now, after internal medicine residency, for those that want to pursue cardiology, they have to be trained for an additional three years. Now, for those that want to subspecialize in the subspecialty of cardiology, they may have to do an extra year to, let's say, become a uh, cardiac electrophysicist. All right. Um, those that uh, take care of the uh, dysarrhythmias of the heart or those that plays like pacemaker or cardio converters. You know, if you want to be the doctor that is called upon to take care of someone who has had a heart attack, uh, the uh, interventionist, you know, you need another year. Heart failure, heart transplant team also need another year after doing three years of cardiology fellowship. Well, that seems a lot. It's a lot. It takes a lot to become a cardiologist. Here with me is my co-resident, um, uh, Dr. Chen. He will be walking us through the steps Hello. of uh, becoming a cardiologist. He's gonna tell us about himself, his story, how he got into cardiology fellowship in a fairly new internal medicine residency program. My name is Dr. Frederick Aqua, currently a third year internal medicine chief resident in New Jersey. And today my guest, like I said, is Dr. Chen. Let's go. Welcome back. So thank you for staying tuned. Uh, my guest here is Dr. Jia Chen. So I will let him introduce himself and he will tell us uh, his background in terms of his education and where he is currently. All right, Dr. Chen. Thank you, Dr. Aqua, for having me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Um, so everybody joining us, uh, thank you for you know being supporting Dr. Aqua and his channel. Um, I'm very very honored to be here. Thank you, Dr. Aqua. Uh, a little bit about myself. I'm Dr. Jia Hong Chen. Um, I graduated from Toro College of Osteopathic Medicine. Currently a third year internal medicine resident here in New Jersey, and I'm pursuing cardiology. Very soon, very soon, yes. <laughs> I like that, I like that. So it's, it's, uh, it's competitive to get into residency and um, cardiology is one of the most competitive subspecialties in internal medicine. And you know, I'm happy that my buddy here was able to match into cardiology. So to the internal medicine residents watching us, to the pre-med guys watching us, could you walk us through the steps or the timeline into how mm -hmm. someone can match into cardiology, what they need to do and, um, mm -hmm. to prepare for or something like that? Oh, for sure, for sure. Very good question. Um, I would say like me personally, you know, I had uh, a focus. Um, I would say I was always interested in the heart. Um, I, I wanted to get as much rotations as I came with the cardiologist, you know, try to uh, rotate with them, follow them around, read cardiology to, to the best that I can. You know, there's some days where it's tough, you know, but you know, I try to try to focus in, try to read as much cardiology as I can. Um, I think for others uh, that are interested in like myself, um, you know, try to know like this is your passion early on, make that decision, um, you know, talk to your um, mentors, um, your, uh, your attending, let them know that this is what you want to do, get into some research, um, whatever research it is. Um, it could be not only exclusively in cardiology, but it also could be any other field of medicine. Mm -hmm. You know, highly encourage that. Um, make sure you doing rotations. Make sure you shine. Make sure you, you know how to of course. do. You know, do your best. You yeah. know, it is. You know, um, you know. Quite frankly, a competitive field. So you want to yeah. make sure you're on, you know, on top of everything. Um, and lastly, during the application, you want to write like a very strong personal statement. And I feel like that myself, like really, you know, paved the way. You know, I had yeah. a couple of interviewers said that I had a pretty good a yeah. personal statement. So, yeah. you know, I would definitely like, yeah. I encourage all of you, um, you know, to do that. I recently uh, stumbled on my um, personal statement for residency, you know, and everything I had written at that time, you know, it seems like that's what um, um, I see myself doing and that's what will be happening in some months to come. Yeah. You know? so, Personal statement plays a vital role in terms of what uh, you telling the program that you be uh, pursuing or what you want to do. So, I mean, I'm impressed that, you know, your dream of becoming a cardiologist is uh, unfolding 
you know, you. Uh, uh, <laughs> gradually. Everyone goes into a specialty in medicine for a reason. You know, I I always say on this channel, I did not like taking care of kids. You know, it would have been nice to be like a family medicine doctor taking care of from babies till you know um, the elderly. You know, but I wanted to take care of people 18 or older, people that can communicate with me, that I don't have to, uh, you know, have parents looking over my shoulder with every decision that I make, you know, and um, so far everything is going well. Now, why did you choose cardiology? Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Arp, I chose cardiology because I was uh, very fascinated by the intricacies of the heart. Um, I always thought that the heart was very um, interesting, mm -hmm. knowing like the minute details, like how the electrical systems work, um, was always very fascinating to me. Um, and that aspect of knowing like the biology, knowing like the molecular, um, uh, the, the works um, of the, the ion channels, uh, what led to the potentials trending down the heart was very fascinating. I always liked science. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's like in medical school, I was able to learn more about the heart. You know, the physiology was also something that um, I was very fascinated about. And I wanted to do more, I wanted to learn more about the heart. And on the board, it's able to explain these yeah. um, conditions, able to explain um, why this came to be to my patient was particularly rewarding for me. And um, also being able to be there for these individuals, you know, when they have like a heart attack or yeah. like, cardiac arrest yeah. or even like a simple like ar arrhythmia, like it's, it's always like very scary, you know, for the patient because your heart is, you know, keeps you alive. <laughs> So like whatever the condition is, like I'm, I want to be there for them, explain to them like, look, we're gonna do our best for you, um, and we're going to get you know not just myself, like our team of experts, you know, on your care so that we can get you you know feeling better, get you feeling better, and that was something that I wanted to do in cardiology. Uh, is there something that you have to share with uh, mm. oh, yeah. residents or medical students right now? Mm -hmm. Your what will be your advice to them? Um, I would say pursue your dreams, pursue your dreams. Um, it is going to be difficult. Don't be afraid that um, if things don't go your way, you can always, you know, fight. keep pursuing your dreams and don't um, let any um, adversary get in your way because you know, at the end of the day, you know, this is what you want to do. And I would, you know, encourage and support all of everyone that is pursuing whether this field myself or any other field. Um, I believe if there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone you know has a different. You know, everyone comes from different backgrounds. Um, all in all, like even if you have that drive to pursue this um, dream, um, I think it will work out for you. Um, you know, stay confident. Um, stay you know level-headed. Know that this is what you want to do, um, and I think just go for it. You know? Uh, you know, the goal here is to never give up. You know. Um, for those that are trying your second or third time to get into residency, hey, if you want to be a doctor, you know, don't give up. For those that applied uh, for fellowship uh, last year and did not, they did not match, you know, there's going to be another year. There's going to be a new season, a new time uh, for you to reapply. So as long as that has been your goal, I encourage you, um, like what Dr. Chen had mentioned, to not give up. So keep pursuing and keep working on your craft. And one day you will uh, you will get there or before you get into something most of the time you need to see what those people do and that can also attract you or defer you from pursuing that uh, you've always wanted to be a cardiologist uh, so far with the people you've worked with on a typical day what do they usually do so from my experience you know working with the, the attending cardiologists um, whether it's interventionalist or electrophysiologist or just one of the non-invasive cardiologists yeah uh, we would typically my rotations are usually in the hospital we would um, generally do like console service wake up in the morning you know and see like you know how many consults we have and um, we will inform our attending who we were going to see. Um, typically, we just manage like the cardiac aspect. Let's say, for instance, we get consulted for um, rapid AFib versus um, heart failure versus um, elevated troponins. <laughs> Favorite. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we try to hone in our, our um, history taking onto those particular um, like diseases, conditions, uh, symptoms. 
um, so that we can have an understanding whether if this is truly cardiac or what is the cause of why um, they need the consultant on board. To get into this competitive subspecialty mm -hmm. in medicine, which group or which attendants would you recommend need to get mm -hmm. a letter of recommendation from? A very good question. Um, I got you know the letter from your uh, program director for sure, okay. um, and I got a letter from the assistant program director. Okay. Um, that I have you know recommendations whether you want to get it from like a cardiologist versus any other attending. Yeah. But I think all in all, um, recommendations from those that have seen you you know do your best, yeah. like to mm -hmm. see that you're a strong candidate. I think would um, make you know, would make your application as strong as it is, um, you know, for these for these uh, attendings that you work with closely, uh, make sure you have developed strong rapport with them. Not only do they know you um, like on the wards, but also know you as a person so they can see that, you know, what what else have you done outside um, the wards that makes you who you are. Chad, there's a chance for you to give a shout out. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, I'd like to shout out to everybody, you know, that I have um, uh, met, who I work with, um, my family, girlfriend, my mentors in the past that have played a role in where I am now. Um, you know, it's definitely a grueling journey. Medical school is tough. Um, residency is tougher. Oh my gosh. Um, but nevertheless, like I want to just thank you everyone that um, played a role in my life, played a role in where I am now because without you guys, you know, like I don't think I'm able to be where I am. Yeah. And um, special thanks Dr. Aqua for having me today. You know, it's, it's my pleasure and it's an honor. It's an honor to uh, able to hopefully inspire um, the next uh, generation of doctors. Uh, pre-meds to pursue this uh, career and it's very it's very exciting um, we have a lot of uh, new technology a lot of um, new interventions you know that are you know happening as as we talk yeah. um, it's a great field you know I highly recommend anyone that's interested in cardiology to pursue the field all right guys so um, we've come to the end of uh, today's uh, talk with uh, Dr. Chang um, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like. Uh, if you have any questions for me or you have any questions for Dr. Chen, please, you can leave that in the comment section below. And please don't forget to subscribe, all right? Thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the next one. Hit that subscribe button. Shalom. That's it? Yeah, that was good, man. That was good. That was good.